don't even, I don't even know where to start. Like, uh, you know, I wasn't anticipating coming home to see every one of my perfume bottles smash to bits. Someone came in with a bat and literally just blew, blew the bedroom up. Every perfume bottle, it's like a bomb went off. And I'm talking, the stench of the perfume alone is absolutely insane. But now I've got to start over and buy new perfumes. And none of this is true, but can you imagine if it was? Can you imagine if all of a sudden you didn't have any perfume left and you had to start from scratch? That's what this video is about today. And yeah, I got the idea from Greta Beth. Actually, lots of people have done videos similar to this, but I was watching hers and I thought I've got to do it. And she did hers. Hers was su super fun. I'll leave it le linked below. Uh, you know, it was if a, a, an earthquake came, but nevertheless, if you had to start from scratch, you were starting over knowing what you know now. So not as a perfume beginner, but knowing what you know now, what perfumes would you buy to begin with? I'm going to share them with you. I can't wait. And before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. So uh, starting from scratch, clean slate, uh, tried tons of perfumes. These are the ones that I would start with, the top 10. Now I'm telling you the first five were totally easy to come up with. Uh, but then after that first five, I could have gone in many directions. So probably would change depending on my mood. If you think that you know what I would wear, put the first top five in the comments before we get started. But anyway, let's continue. I'm going to start with uh, one that I just have a sample of, and that is Delina by Parfums de Marley. It's number one on my list. I would have to have it first. I wouldn't want a dupe. I would want the real thing. I just find that this is such, in fact, I'm going to put this on. It is such a beautiful fragrance. It's tart. It's sweet. It's rose. It's uh, sexy. It's feminine, it's bold, and it's absolutely beautiful. And it would be the very first fragrance I would purchase. Like it's absolutely worth the price tag as far as I'm concerned. It's absolutely stunning. And so yeah, Delina by Parfums de Marley would be the very first one. Number two would be my beloved Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. I love this fragrance. It's to me completely different than this one. So they're both powerhouse grown woman fragrances. You smell sexy put together, amazing, classy with both of them, but this one's completely different. So this one is orange citrus. Um, it's got bergamot in it. So it's got this beautiful kind of warm orange opening. Uh, to me, it smells like a ripe orange that's quite sweet rather than a tart type citrus. Uh, then it's got a, a mixture of florals um, and then dries down to kind of a vanillic woody base. This thing lasts a long time. It projects fantastic. I get compliments when I wear it, uh, as I do with Delina, but I always get compliments when I wear this one. And I just feel very, very classy and grown up when I wear this one. It's so, so pretty. Um, I love the bottle. I love everything about this fragrance. So this is one that I would have to have in my collection. Interestingly enough, it's not one that I wear often. I'm not sure why. I think maybe because I save it, but it's very sentimental to me. Uh, my husband and son bought this for me uh, for Mother's Day uh, when I first started into perfume. And so it means a lot from that perspective. But I just think it's the epitome of class. I love it. I know some people find this to be quite patchouli heavy. I don't notice the patchouli in this one um, near as much. I notice a bit of spicy wood, uh, but I get more of that vanilla and then that beautiful orange. So I just love this one. I enjoy wearing it the whole day when I put it on. Next fragrance is an absolute cheapie and it is La Rive's Fleur de Femme. Now I know I could go if I'm starting all over again, I could just go with Poison Girl, but honestly, I like this one just as much, if not more. Uh, this one has a cherry note in it. It smells a little bit like an almond, somehow an almond sangria. The older this one gets, uh, the more almond centric it is. So definitely you get that poison, uh, poison aspect 
um, like hypnotic poison is super super almond heavy this has a nice dose of fruits in it so there's uh, orange in it there's there's cherry in the Lurie version uh, but it just smells I think there's peach in this one as well I just think it's delicious it's decadent it's sexy it's uh, like it's got that fruit aspect which I love uh, but it's got the warmth and sexiness of that almond. So I just think this one's amazing. Now, what else is amazing about this one is unlike Poison Girl, which costs like about 150 bucks if you can get your hands on it, this one is $9 on FragranceNet. So uh, I leave everything linked down below, but this one is nine bucks, I think, with the discount on FragranceNet. So it is so, so cheap. Um, I was just, uh, someone from New Zealand had left in the comments that Lurie fragrances are $75 there. So I am so sorry that that's the case there. I know in Germany, Poland, uh, places in Europe, it, it's very affordable and kind of considered uh, not a very prestigious brand by any means. Uh, and the price tag, super, super affordable here. Uh, but it's such a beautiful fragrance that it would be the third one I'd buy. <laughs> the next fragrance that I would purchase is uh, La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Honestly, Jean-Paul Gaultier is one of my favorite houses, like probably because I like the cheeky bottles, but I love this fragrance. Um, I know that there's many other notes on the website but primarily you're getting pear, vanilla, and vetiver. I know there's leather, there's some sort of spiciness in this one, but to me it smells like a, a, a pear that's been cooked in some sort of a liqueur, uh, a little bit syrupy, maybe brandy with some spices mixed in. It's absolutely de delectable. This is another one that I get compliments on. Um, I just enjoy wearing this one. It's flirty, it's feminine. Uh, some people would say that this is mainly an evening fragrance. I would wear this during the day. I just think it's cheery and happy. Uh, so I absolutely love this fragrance. I'm going to share one more Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance and that is um, Scandale à Paris. Uh, so this fragrance has pear in it as well, but it's a little bit more of a fresh pear so it doesn't smell cooked. It smells more like a ripe, juicy pear uh, mixed with honey and jasmine. So this one is kind of sexy, but it's not too heavy. So the original Scandal, this, the honey just goes too indolic on me. It smells a little bit like pee somehow on my wrist. I love the opening and then it just goes weird on me. So it doesn't work with my skin chemistry, but the Scandal à Paris does. Now this one, my husband has complimented me on it and he doesn't normally compliment me on fragrances. So this is a definite keeper because he actually likes this one. So uh, love this one. It's cheery, it's flirty. It's more for spring and summer, although I have worn this in the winter. The longevity is a little less good in the winter just because it's, it, I don't know, it seems to, it doesn't project as well in the cooler months, but in spring and summer, I really enjoy this. And the honey isn't too much for the summertime. So this is a major win for me. So the next fragrance I would purchase is Alien by Mugler. Now this fragrance, it's kind of a hard fragrance to describe. It has jasmine, but it's kind of a sweet, sweet indolent jasmine. It's just so sexy. It's, it's got amber. I think it's got some wood in it. Um, it's, it smells kind of thick and resinous and just sexy. There's a sweetness to it. There's a bit of cleanness with the jasmine, a little bit soapy. Uh, but I just think that this is such a sexy powerhouse fragrance. So I love the wear wearing this one. I love the longevity on it. Um, yeah, now this is the, the older formulation. I'm not sure about the newer formulation. I kind of want to do a test of the two, but this one is just, it's amazing. I love it. And I always want it in my collection. Next fragrance that I would purchase is Terracotta by Guerlain. Now this one, uh, this one is just, it, it's just amazing. Like it's, it's kind of a summer tropical fragrance. 
Uh, there's coconut in this one. It smells a little bit oily, uh, but sweet, delicious. Terracotta has tiare flower, coconut, and bergamot in the opening, jasmine, ylang ylang, orange blossom in the mid, and vanilla and musk in the base. So what I get, I definitely get that tiare flower, I definitely get the ylang ylang, uh, and, and just a hint of coconut. There's an oily quality to this one that reminds me of Moroccan oil, I've said that before. Um, it smells warm, it smells sweet, it smells just intoxicating but really relaxing so this isn't to me a sunscreen fragrance it's more of a classy elevated um, tropical fragrance this one i like way better than bronze goddess bronze goddess to me doesn't even compare love terracotta i find the longevity pretty good like five hours five hours on this one but it's just it's to me a very elevated sexy grown woman uh tropical fragrance it, it, like you smell rich and boozy with this one so I absolutely love this one I find it extremely relaxing and as a result wouldn't want to be without it next fragrance that I would uh purchase um if all my fragrances were gone would be girl of now shine now this one I talk about a ton. It's warm and sweet. I don't get complimented on this one. This isn't one uh, that my family really enjoys on me, but I just really enjoy it. It's warm, it's a little bit nutty, it's sweet with almond and pistachio, but then it also has this beautiful pineapple note that smells kind of cooked down. Uh, so it's just warm and comforting to me. I love wearing this fragrance. It always makes me feel cozy and happy and comforted somehow. So I love having this one in my collection. Uh, now to be really frank, like people have said, okay, it's discontinued. You've got to get a backup bottle. I don't really have backup bottles of things. So I'd rather go through it. And if I can still find it, great. I don't know if I'd buy a backup bottle being it's discontinued. Uh, just simply because uh, once it's discontinued, then nobody can get it. So why would I bother sharing it on online? But um, I definitely love this one. And if I were to lose it tomorrow, I would buy it tomorrow. <laughs> now the next fragrance that I would have to buy, and I wouldn't be buying any other rendition, would be Lancome's Oud Bouquet. Now I have Shakehoff Oud. Um, I would not purchase Shakehoff Oud. I would purchase Lancome's Oud Bouquet. Now it is just a lot smoother. I've smelt it now. Uh, it's a lot smoother. It smells very similar to Shakehoff Oud. So um, it's not like I'm going to run out and buy it tomorrow. But definitely if I was replacing, I would not buy this one. This one's a bit screechy. It's a little bit harsh. Uh, Lancome's Oud Bouquet is, is the Rose Oud... Um, the rose saffron oud praline combination but it's just 10 times more smooth than the shakehoff oud version so there's a smoothness to it it smells like velvet like it smells like a rose oud praline velvet somehow so i love it i just think it's so classy it's it's powerful it's sexy and definitely would want it in my collection as kind of the premier date night fragrance. I don't really need a lot of sexy date night fragrances and I'm seeing that kind of in this. So I've got some flirty fragrances that can go either way, but as far as having like a really sexy, uh, powerful, um, opulent fragrance, uh, Lancome's Oud Bouquet would be the one that I would choose uh, for my first tan. So for the last fragrance, um, I actually couldn't decide between two. Um, so I'm going to mention both of them. If I totally went with what I absolutely want, it would be Dirty Mango by Richard. Now, uh, this one is hard to find anywhere in North America. Uh, there is a place, and I will leave it linked down below if I can find the information, uh, but they haven't had it in stock for a while. So I don't even know if I could get this but i love this so this is called dirty mango um it is the most realistic mango scent that i've smelled and i just find it absolutely delicious 
I find that this one lasts a long time on my skin. It smells cheery. It makes me happy. You're, you know, although there's lots of different notes in here, what you get is basically just straight up mango. Oh, it smells so incredible. I like this better than uh, Wilhelm Perfumery's uh, Mango Skin. Uh, mango Skin is a lot sweeter, I find, as I recall. I haven't smelt it in a while, but I remember thinking it smelt more sweet. And I just prefer this one because it stays linear, but it stays like that tart, juicy, mouth-watering mango the whole entire time. And I absolutely love it. So this has mango, peach, vanilla, frangipani, orange, ylang ylang, musk, mandarin orange, tuberose, coconut milk, almond milk, rose, sandalwood, lily, jasmine, iris, and violet. I don't know how all these notes are in here because all I smell is delicious mango. It's just, it's divine. For whatever reason too, uh, like I, I've had the flu for the past week and a half, really sick, felt sick to my stomach the whole entire time. For half the time, I couldn't even sniff, smell. No, it was not COVID, but I couldn't smell anything because I was so bunged up in the nose. And I decided to have a shower and put on all these mango products. And then I topped it off with this and I could smell this even though I was stuffed up. And somehow it didn't make my stomach feel, feel sick. In fact, it kind of calmed my stomach down. So I love this fragrance. I just don't think I can find it here in Canada uh, at the time. So I chose it, but it's unrealistic. The, the other one that I would choose, uh, which was kind of a shock to me, is actually Amethyst's Lalique. So this one smells like kind of a watery berry tea. Uh, it smells like the berries, the stems, the leaves. It's not sweet at all. It smells very... Um, like there's a bit of tartness to it, a bit of greenness to it, uh, but somehow I find this one really relaxing and also settling in the stomach. So whenever I feel a little bit sick to my stomach, I tend to reach for this one for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy wearing this one. It's certainly not blind by worthy. It sounds like it's going to be like this berry uh, like, and when I think berry, I think sugary berries. So when I first saw this, I thought it would be like this amazing sugary berry fest, which I'm all over too. Uh, but this is instead was a very much, uh, green kind of watery, uh, berry tea with no sugar in it at all. So I've said that this is my otherworldly fragrance in the past. I just imagine an elf queen or an elf princess wearing it with bare feet with some sort of gown covered in crystals and they're walking on moss through a forest picking berries and you can smell the the leaves and the the you can smell the leaves and the wood and everything. That's what this reminds me of. So I I I so enjoy wearing this one and yeah if I couldn't get my hands on mango skin this just makes my mouth water this would be the next one I would buy which is a shock to me because it's not my general uh, sweet berry fragrance but I just love this one find it so calming so those are my fragrances. I'm sorry if I scare you and made you think that I had lost them all, but I've got to be a little bit dramatic every once in a while. So I hope you enjoyed this. What would be the first five that you would buy? If you want to put all, all 10, feel free. But what would be the five that you would buy if you lost your entire collection? Hopefully that'll never happen. But yeah, if I was starting over, knowing everything that I know now, I would buy no dupes. I would buy all the real thing. I would have Delina in my collection pronto. Uh, and then from there, go on to the rest of them, which are all absolutely amazing. So uh, that is it. I hope you enjoyed. Have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.